We're going to breathe some life into our Raspberry Pi. It basically hasn't even been switched on, only just come out of the anti static bag. Um, but first thing I've done is I've added this little guy here, which is a keyboard and mouse. Um, I'm going for the uh, wireless option purely because it only uses one USB port and leaves three free. Um, and I've got my power adapter here, which is off my Samsung phone that I'll use to power the little beast. Got a brand new cable here for my HDMI so I can actually connect it up to my spare monitor here. And we're going to use this little beast here, which will house the um, software, which is actually called Noobs. Um, it's a little 64 gig SD card. But now we'll move forward. That's all the bits and pieces we're going to need to get the thing up and running. But now we need to move in and look at the software side. I forgot to add something else because uh, obviously I assumed everybody knew about SD cards. Um, you're going to need an SD card adapter, whether it's one of these bigger ones or there's some that will take the small card. But what I use is one of my little SD card adapters. Let's grab this Samsung one here. As you can see in the top, there's a little slot because what we do is we grab our memory card, drop him in there. Then we take my SD card reader, make sure it's in the right slot, which it isn't. Goes in there, should fit firmly. Then I drop that onto my PC. So the first thing we're going to need is our Raspberry Pi software. So we go to the main site, which is raspberrypi.org. If you just stick Raspberry Pi in any browser, it will take you to a list of available sites. But it's basically just raspberrypi.org, as you can see up here. Go to Downloads. And this is the one we want, Noobs. Noobs is an easy operating system installer which contains Raspbian. It also provides a selection of alternative operating systems which are then downloaded from the internet installed. Blah, blah, blah. So either download it as a torrent. If you don't know what torrent is, just download the zip. So you just click on that and it should begin downloading. There you go. Save and it will download. I'm not going to save it because I already have it on my hard drive. But basically you just want to click save. Next thing we're going to need is a piece of software to format our SD card. So we've got SD formatter and we should actually get, where is the main one? Uh, let's go Google search. SD formatter. There you go, he's gone for the right one. Because it should actually be sdcard.org, which are the main guys for SD cards, for the standards, etc. So uh, open that site. Oh, we could actually just click that one and download it for Windows, but let's go to the site anyway. So here we go, quick search, scroll down. Okay, download for Windows. License agreement, accept, save. Now, if you're downloading zip files and don't have anything to unzip them, just go google.com, winzip. What's this one? You're going to watch some of these because some of them are not what they seem. I don't recognize that site. So I go back.
Yeah, that one I'll do. So download WinZip. And I said, if it says it's downloading an installer or something like that, and not just the exe file, change sites. Because you've got to be very careful with looking for this type of software because some of these are malware and pretend to be something they're not. There you go. WinZip training is free up here or there. I'll download this one just to confirm it's actually 100%. So this is from winzip.com. This is the original one. I recognize this logo going back a long time. Um, yeah, that looks like it. It doesn't look like there's any junk in this one. Finally, Winzip's installed. He didn't install any junk, so winzip.com is fine to download the software. I'll just click on that. I'm not really interested in what it's got to say now. We've got the software. When I open the SD format now, we should open with WinZip because it recognizes the software. There we go. It's a lot more newer than the last time I used this. Okay. Yes, we trust it because we do know where it came from. a small piece of software so it shouldn't take long to install it's now asked me if I want to install so there we go it's going to take a few seconds finish now that should be it so now we've got our SD card ready um, we want to actually format it so we know it's called SD Formatter, so let's open that up. We know it's drive H, this one here. So we just check it's the right drive. Don't, I mean, lucky enough it knows it's that one because sometimes I do have more than one on here. And I'm going to call this Pi for obvious reasons. And format. Quick format. Do not remove the drive. And off it goes, it's quite quick. Look, it's 40% already complete. 50, 60. And that worked a treat. As I said earlier, I had actually already downloaded Noobs. So go to your Noobs folder. Um, if it's zipped, unzip it uh, using WinZip. And basically, you just want to create a folder um, once it well, it'll extract into a folder. You get all your files here, then basically just drag and drop. And as you can see, I've already started here, it's got four minutes 30 seconds remaining, and we're just going to wait for that to finish now. Now, we've now transferred our software over onto the SD card, and we're just going to grab our Raspberry Pi on the bottom of the board. Oh, you will see there's this SD card slot. Just push the stick in there, you'll hear it click. See? And that's it ready to go. So let's power them up and see what happens. Well, we've hit a bit of a snag. Um, it boots up. Well, I say it boots up, it switches on. Uh, lights are showing, but it can't actually set up properly. Why? Because I've got a 64 gig memory card. Um, reading up on this, because obviously it didn't tell me until actually I tried to do it when I go and research, because this is half the battle with this thing. Um, it can't handle um, 64 gig until the system's up and running. And Windows, in its pearl of wisdom, will not give you a memory stick over 32 gig 
in FAT32, which is what you need to make it bootable. Um, because Windows comes up with XFAT, which is a different format. It doesn't work. And basically, I need it to be FAT32 to work. Once it's up and running, it's not a problem. But the problem is I need to partition my 64 gig stick into two. So I've got two 32s, get one on the boot, then later on it's not a problem. But following this tutorial I've just spent ages on, um, it works with a normal drive up to 32 gig. Um, beyond that, you're going to have the problems I'm currently facing, where I've now got to get software online to separate my my uh, 64 bit drive into two partitions of 32 so that it can actually format and prepare the drive in 30 um a th fat 32 frustrating but hey ho if you're under th under the 30 under 32 gig or whatever then you're fine this tutorial has been useful if you're like me and you're 64 or more, then you just hit the brick wall I've just got. But like I says, there's a solution. You've got to get it in. You got to split the partitions down into 32. You know, 32 gig bootable partition in FAT32, and just copy the files across the same way we did earlier, and then it'll be fine. It'll boot from that, no problem. All right, thanks for watching.